Yo, what's good, everybody? Uh, so today we're talking about we're at the Creative Financing Academy with myself and uh, Lonzi Rattler from Flint, Michigan with the Champion Real Estate Institute. So we're just waiting for Lonzi to get on. I was running a little bit behind today. Uh, I, had a, I had to go golfing with uh, the mayor's son and uh, there ended up being four of us out there. So it took a little longer than expected, but that's, uh, that's my apologies, guys. So guys, what we're gonna be talking about today is funding, okay? Because as you know, you know, with the Go-Getter family, and uh, Champion Real Estate Institute, um, we, we use subject two, and we use creative financing, all right? And doing that, we become the bank, okay? So by becoming the bank, um, we create debt. We don't go into debt. Uh, and that said, oh, I see Lonzi's on there. Let me get his request. Lonzi, send your request, bro, and uh, we'll get you on. Um, in becoming the bank, we, uh, we create debt. We don't go into debt. So we like to, we use other people's money, you know, uh, and, and in order to do that, you have to go about it in a, a strategic way, okay? And strategically means that you've got to go in like a certain sequence in order to get these things done. Uh, waiting on Lonzi here to join. I see you joined, Lonzi. I got to get you on though. I don't know if I got to send you an invite or you got to send me an invite request. And we'll get you on. You see the request, uh, request to join me there, Lonzi. So going about this in a strategic way, I still had a golf ball in my pocket. I was out golfing with the mayor's son, guys. We use relationship, uh, relationship equity. Okay. Oh, I see you there. All right. There we go. About to be on. Yo, there you go. What's going on, champ? What's good, big homie? What's up? What's up? Man, I see you out with the screens, bro. There it is. All right, man. What's up with you, man? Man, I can't be more happier, man. I'm all good. I'm all good. That's what's up, man. My fault for being late, man. I was just telling the viewers, man, I, I had a little golf outing this morning, man. I was out golfing with the mayor's son. We had a couple extra people, so it took a little longer. But you know, it's about that relation, that relationship equity that I that I preach, man. So here we are, man. What you got going on, man? Nothing at all, man. I'm just taking it easy on this Saturday, man. So everything like we are good, man. We good. Yeah, yeah. That's what's up, man. Uh, uh, guys, for those that just joined, um, this is uh, this is Lonzi Rattler from the Champion Real Estate Institute out of Flint, Michigan. I'm Gene Boykin with the Go Getter Family. Uh, guys, this is a creative financing academy, all right, where we're talking about uh, subject to real estate investing as well as creative financing, uh, real estate investing. So today, we're going to talk to you about funding, all right, because, I mean, we can't do anything without money now, right. but the thing about it is we like to use other people's money because right. we don't like to use our own, you know. So, um, Lonzi, go ahead and... Uh, uh, Go ahead and give us the intro here today, man. You wanted to talk about this today, so uh, what do you got? Yeah, I mean, like we can uh, definitely talk about OPM because um, it's it's some it's some that's definitely uh, not really used. Well, it's used doing fix and flips or stuff like that. Right. A lot of people don't know how to use OPM when you are doing creative deals and mm -hmm. how to funding and things of that sort. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can still use this opium method on creative deals so right. you can do it but it's just not a lot of people are talking about because uh a lot of uh like a lot of lenders right like they always want to be first lane home whole whole position right right so what happened to them people that still want to uh do private funding mm -hmm. But they okay with being the second lean position, so they cool with that as long as they get a residual. Yes, so OPM is definitely good. OPM. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I hear you talking about a lot when I'm checking out like some of your videos that you post. Um, yeah. And then I've heard you mention before too. One of you, you'll, you'll just say in passing too, like you know, one of my private lenders. You know, right. one of my, and I've heard you say that many times, and I love that phrase. You know, yeah. I love that phrase because you know, yeah, when we when we use funding through a bank. 
Um, yeah. They are in that first position lien. And for those of you watching that don't know what that means, it's um, the property is used as collateral. So there's a lien placed on that property. So the debt, the debt is on us. But if yeah. we uh, fail to pay that debt, we become delinquent. They can uh, foreclose on us and then yeah. they take they take over that property. OK, so um, I like using private lenders as well. Uh, you know, sometimes they will they we will uh, put a lien on the a first position uh, lien on the property. But then again, sometimes we won't. You know, it's just uh, based off of your contract. So let me ask you this, Lonzi, uh, your private lenders. Talk about that. Um, so private lenders, uh, private lenders is just like you and I. Right. So mm -hmm. anyone who have who have funds, who's looking to invest, whether it's in stocks, whether it's, they're looking for another vehicle to make them some income. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, there's no like there's no banks, there's no credit checks involved. Um, it's just that you got, have to show them a credible deal. Right. And a lot of times private lenders is someone who you actually know, like literally who's seeing you doing real estate or um, or like whatever um, entrepreneurship role are you walking. Right. They see mm -hmm. that's and they want to know how can they get in. Mm hmm. How, how I always talk to my private lenders, I always say, hey, um, I invest in, I literally invest in the real estate without mm -hmm. using my funding, and we still get private lenders like you and I. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we give you, So we bring you all the credible deal. And they're like, hold on, how? I mean, like, how can I still make money and I don't have to purchase this property at all? No. Mm -hmm. So then I show them, but of course, like, you got to walk through um, a scenario with them because creative financing is very it's not it's simple but it's not easy right there you go um so yeah so once you're showing them showing them the creative way mm -hmm. then of course they all in like they yeah. all, they all yeah. in. property right now mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> uh it's a foreclosure deal though but the homeowner i think the homeowner is anywhere for about ten to twenty thousand dollars that they're looking to walk away with, um, and they okay. for eighty nine thousand. They want so let's just say twenty grand that they want to walk away with. Mm -hmm. So then at one hundred nine, but the property value is at two fifty two or two fifty eight, something mm -hmm. like that. Ooh, we yes, yeah, so, one hundred fifty. Yeah, so all I'm gonna do is just use the private funding. Um, to give the homeowners some walk away money. So right. they 20 grand to walk away and we go acquire that property and turn around and just put it right on the market. And oh, okay. So you're going to put it on the market and sell it. You're not going to um, keep it for passive income. You're going to make that big chunk. Yeah. Yeah. I like that too, though. That's fine. You know, as long as we're making a profit. So let me, um, let me try to break this down into, uh, into simpler terms here. What Lonzi is doing, because people, you know, even like, um, the older generation, you know, have their money in CDs uh, yeah. or in a, in a savings account and the, the interest rate on those, I mean, it's super low, you know, you're not making much money off of, off of the money that you have saved away, you know, that you want to grow, you know, because if you have that money just put away and it's not growing, what, what good is it? You know, it's not growing. So, uh, what he does is he'll use, he'll, he'll talk to these people and these are based off of relationships, you know, relationship equity. Uh, cause like he said, it's usually people that know him or know of him and sees what he's got going on, sees what, sees what he's doing. And, um, he'll, he'll present them, you know, with a deal that he's doing at the time, but he has to walk them through how this deal is going to work and how they're going to make their money. You know, yeah. this is the thing. Now I, uh, my business partner is a doctor and he had told me one time about a friend of ours, a mutual friend that, um, wanted to borrow some money from him to start like a, a clothing store or a shoe store or something. So um, my friend, the doctor asked him, well, okay, so how are we going to make the money back? And uh, he's like, oh, man, we just, we are, man. You know, these shoes, man, these are hot. These are exclusive shoes that I'm going to be selling. I don't know. Uh, you, yeah, you want me to give you $25,000 based off of you saying we are going to make our money back? Mm -mm, guys, so what we do is we have to have things planned out of how it's going to work <laughs> in a step-by-step process when we want to use someone else's money it has to be a step-by-step -step process so you know well, i'm going to go back to real estate i'm not going to talk about the shoe store and clothing store how you would do that with the real estate you want to show them um where the property is oh, yeah. how much yeah how much the property is worth you know yeah. after you know it's arv it's after repair value and then how much it's going to cost to acquire this property 
you yeah. know, those basic numbers, that will give you the basis to show them, you know, okay, this is how much I'm buying it for. This is how much we can sell it for the after repair value. So we're making this money in between. So yep. you give me, you know, 20,000, you said about 20,000, the yep. homeowner wants to walk, walk away with. It yep. sounds like you're going to make about roughly, uh, you could make 149,000 profit off of this deal. Minus yeah. the fees, you know, you, you got your fees and stuff like that. So we'll just say, uh, we'll say about 125,000 to be safe. You give that, that, that uh, uh, investor puts up 20. I yep. mean, you know, to, to make it sweet, depending on the investor, you could even double them up because you're making so much profit. Yeah. What, so yeah. What are you going to? So, uh, so what I'm gonna do on that property, that investor gonna recoup his uh his twenty grand back. Mm -hmm. So so now so that leaves us roughly like with a hundred grand. So we are gonna do a fifty fifty split. He take fifty, I take fifty. We walk away. Everybody be happy. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And, like and then so it's it's good for the profit side, but mm -hmm. um and and then it's also good for that actual homeowner because now the bank saying that that property. Uh, even though it had foreclosed on, mm -hmm. property um, had been paid off. So now right. homeowner have to wait, I, I, I think, an additional two years. Mm -hmm. But if they did not sell the property after the property got foreclosed, like they can't go get another loan for the next seven years. Right. So we helping the homeowner out, mm -hmm. um, definitely giving them some walkaway money and then mm -hmm. taking over the property and we sell it. Yeah, that's beautiful. So let's talk about this, guys, because we've got, you know, um, potential investors, people that want to um, yeah. become real estate investors, want to become the bank. So how does that how does that work, Lonzi? Because you said yeah. this this property, it was in foreclosure. So did it have a sheriff's auction date already? Yeah, it already sold at the auction. On... Oh, you're doing a redemption. Yeah. So I I'm love doing those. strategy, right? So uh, I'm doing another strategy. Yeah, it's redemption rights, right? So... Uh, so depending on what what state you in, I'm here in Michigan. Um, we have, even though it's called a right of redemption, so right. So even though that the property have already been foreclosed on and the property sold at the auction, you still got the right of redemption. So, so you got that actual homeowner still got the right to redeem that property back, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. at that auction price. So yes. let's say for so in this uh, in this seller case. They bought the property in I think two thousand and two for like a hundred thousand dollars, right? And they just kept taking refis out, refi, refi, mm. refi. And of course, now they to the point where that they got the property foreclosed on back in May. Mm -hmm. and, um and now the homeowner is like, what I mean, like what am I supposed to do? I don't want to sell. I can't I I the homeowner don't know that he can sell his property. Because he got the right of redemption, so mm -hmm. um, once you so what's crucial once you know the documentation and once you know how the system works behind it, don't just stop at the because I know a lot of us is calling pre foreclosures. Then we stop like once the once we hear that the property been through a sheriff sale, that's not mm -hmm. the property. It's yes, good. it sure but, ain't. Mm -hmm. So you can still contact that contact that seller you can still take ownership of that property you can still sell that property um but it just depending on what state you in mm -hmm. florida um florida florida does not have a, a, a right of redemption mm -hmm. georgia they have a year so mm -hmm. even, so like they got a whole year mm -hmm. uh, here in michigan i know that we got six months so even yep. though it sold in it sold in may mm -hmm. till november to actually pay this property off right right so yeah, that I turn around, take ownership, transfer the deed over to me, and put that property right on the market. Bring in a retail buyer. The uh -huh. retail going to do all of the funding. Right. Two fifty two. Yeah, that's beautiful, and that's um the state next to me, South Dakota, uh, has six months for their right of redemption. So this yeah. is the thing. This is the thing about it, all right? And then for the viewers that are, are just joining us, this is Alonzi Rattler with the Champion Real Estate Institute. I'm Gene Boykin with the Go-Getter family. Uh, yeah. This is Creative Financing, the Creative Financing Academy, all right? This is where we're talking about how we become the bank in real estate investing, where we do not need a lump sum of money. 
No. And we don't have to go to the bank and apply for credit and show W-2s and proof of income or any of that. And we're buying investment properties, making passive income and making lump sums of money. So what we're talking about today is, is using other people's money uh, mm -hmm. to make these purchases. So we're not coming out of our own pocket to pay out, you know, some equity. And Lonzi is talking about a strategy right now that I think is uh, it's beautiful because one, not a lot of people are doing this. Oh yeah. yeah. Two, most people aren't even aware that yeah. you can actually do this. And all we're doing guys essentially is shuffling some papers around. That's all we're doing. Okay. That's all we doing. Shuffling some papers around making four or five figures. Yeah. So I can tell you that the right of redemption paperwork is probably like four documents. Dude, what documents, what documents do you use? Um, matter of fact, I got my laptop here. So what document I use, I know I, there's not a purchase agreement. Okay. Okay. Um, I know it is. Hold on. I got it. It's a quick claim deed up in there. I was going to ask you how you deeded it. So a quick yeah. claim deed is super simple too, guys, with a quick claim. I'll talk about that while you look up your documents. That quick claim deed, you don't even have to go to a title company to do a quick claim, guys. It's beautiful. All you've got to do, that quick claim, I know in Iowa, it's just uh, one sheet, man. It's one page. Um, and it just says they're, yeah, that you're getting the property deeded over to you. You sign it with your uh, with your seller uh, and your you know the seller and the buyer, and you got to get it notarized. And then you file it at the recorder's office. What's well, the recorder's office here in Iowa where I'm at? Um, that you file it and you own that home now. You own that home. Yeah. So it, yeah, like literally, it's um, it's for it's for I think it's for documents. I see. Mm -hmm. So you got the quick claim. And yep. you don't need and you don't need a, a purchase agreement, he says in this one. Um, so guys, this is it's already been sold at auction. They, they have went and they bid on it at the sheriff's sale. And it usually goes now, depending on the property, it's gonna go for way under the market value anyway. Mm -hmm. So when you go in and you get these properties, um, we're getting it, you know, for way under market value. And then you just pay the person that was foreclosed on. You pay them a little bit of walking away money. And since they don't know that this is even an option, hey, this is all extra money in their pocket. I mean, 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks. Seriously. And you're in there. Yeah. There, and, and, and that's totally it. Uh, that's all you need to do is literally, once you take ownership of the property, now the bank's saying, hey, you have to, pay off X amount of dollars because they still first lien position. They right. Still first lien. First lien. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you, yeah, you got to get them out of the way so that they don't have uh, uh, that property up as collateral anymore. You know, that property is no longer collateral for them. So what he's doing is he's buying his property. Um, he's using a pri his private money lender, right? Yep. So he's not going and doing credit checks and uh, deep debt to income <laughs> ratios, no. any of that. And he's no. using his private money lender to uh, uh, pay the seller who was foreclosed on. And then <laughs> also uh, to, to uh, uh, he's not even using, he's just using that to pay the seller in this, in this instance. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, and then, so you pay the seller to walk away and then you're putting it on the market because you have those six months. So yep. the person who buys it at retail value is yep. then paying that auction amount yep. for you. And then you're catching the spread. That's what I'm doing. So the four documentation that you're going to need is a relocation assistant agreement. You said, wait, say that again. You cut out. A relocation assistant agreement. Okay. So that just said, hey, I'm paying you X amount of dollars to walk away from the property. I'm okay. buying the as is. Mm -hmm. right? As is, yep. Quick. Yep. The second one is you're going to need a release of all claims. Mm -hmm. So homeowner was trying to go down there and say, hey, they claiming the property. I need a release of all of. I, I need you to walk away completely of this property, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One that you'll need is a certificate of non-redemption. Okay. So they are signing over the right of redemption to you. Yes. So that's okay. a certificate of that, and then you're gonna need a quick claim deed. Go down to the register of deeds. The only paperwork that you need to file with the register of deeds is the quick claim deed. That's it. Yep. That's it. Station. It's for you to hold on um, if that seller was to try to come back and try to sue you mm -hmm. on the, that uh, any legal suit, you can bring up these documentations. Right. So it's pro it's uh, absolutely important that these are notarized, too. With oh, yeah. 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 You got to have these notarized, especially that quick claim deed. That has to be notarized in order to file it with the recorder. So, guys, did you hear how simple this is? Simple. 
simple, simple. So, so it's time. I said this uh, the, yesterday when I did a show with my, uh, my credit repair specialist. Um, right, Bloomberg reported that right now is uh, the, the best time, the easiest time in history to become a millionaire. There yeah. are, yeah, there's 1,700 people a day becoming millionaires in the United States of America, right? And we're, we're sitting here on this beautiful Saturday afternoon giving mm-hmm. you the game. Giving yeah. you the game, man. Giving you the game. Lonzi just told you about a property that he's buying that was already sold at a uh, sheriff's auction. Uh, and he's paying that that person who got foreclosed on. He's paying yeah. them 20 grand. And and listen to this. I mean, I think personally, that's kind of high because they yeah. wouldn't have got anything had Lonzi not said, hey, this house right. is a nice house. And hey, this is what you can do. You still got options. So yeah. they're, they're kind of, they're coming off, man. And I, but you know, that's cool though. That's cool, Lonzi, because you're supposed to treat people well, treat people right, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's what's happening in this instance, man. You're treating them really good. And then he's borrowing the money to pay them from one of his private lenders based off of his reputation and who he is and his relationship equity. And then he's going to make, you know, give or take, I, I would say between uh, um, 90 and maybe 100, 110,000 personally. And the good thing about it is that I'm going to be the, my own real estate agent who's going Ooh. to private lender market. So, so you're getting the commission off of that yeah. retail sell. Now, do they have dual agents in Michigan? You can they be an agent for the buyer and seller. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, man, you're getting that six that six percent too off of that that fee. So, but see, the good thing about it, the brokers I'm with, because I'm with Keller Williams, and they don't allow us to list our own property and sell it. Mm-hmm. Fine. So I'm just going to transfer the property over to my private lender and put me and put and just put in the paperwork that we got a fifty fifty split, so the title company would know. So I'm ah. so it's looking like I'm listing his property, private lender um property and sell yes. it. Yeah, so so I can receive that commission and also receive that fifty fifty. Yes, man. So, yeah. This is this is the this is the outside of the box thinking. Yeah, right there. We, yeah, we've got to think outside of the box. We've got to mm-hmm. be creative because these options are there. These yeah. options are there, and the value that Lonzi just provided right now, man, is um, man, it's priceless because um, that's why you know the name of uh, you know what I found is it's the Go Getter family. So if you're a Go Getter, you're you just got this knowledge. He just mm-hmm. gave you told you what documents you need. So yeah. if you're a Go Getter, man, you, you you're gonna hit the ground running. You're gonna get in your local newspaper. You're gonna see that when the sheriff's auction is. You're gonna go on the county website. You're gonna find out when the sheriff's auction is. You're gonna find the homes. You're gonna get after it. You're gonna go get it. Damn it, that's what you're gonna do. So it's right there for you. Lindsay just gave you the game. So I'm gonna talk about my first subject too because I didn't pay any out of pocket money for that. Okay, yeah. I used other people's money on that. And this okay. is what, yeah, this is what I did now. Subject two that we talk about with creative financing and subject two, we're taking over the mortgage on a house. Okay, mm-hmm. and we're not going into banks, uh, applying for credit and showing, you know, W-2s, all that stuff, because we are becoming the bank. So yeah. the, the debt with the subject two, it stays in the seller's name. The mortgage does. It stays in their name. So I'm not personally guaranteeing that debt, but the deed, it is in my name and I buy in trust. OK, so it's in my trust name and I own that trust. Um, so all that said, this is what I did. Now, I got a beautiful house, man. It's a two bedroom, one bathroom in God's country, which is a neighborhood they call they, they call that in my city. God's country. So, so you can imagine, you know, it's a nice neighborhood. Um, well, they, they had bought the house like a year and a half before uh, they put it on the market for sale by owners. So they didn't have much equity. But the the um, the uh, property value had went up based off of the market. So they wanted fifteen thousand uh, dollars, you know, to buy out. So I agreed to pay them that fifteen thousand. And what I did was in order to and this was my first one. So I didn't have, uh, you know, a lot of people that knew what I was doing and knew what I was capable of. So I didn't have people saying like, hey, Gene, what are you doing, man? I want to get in and make some money with you. You know, not at that point, I didn't. So this is what I did. When I signed the purchase agreement with my seller, and I always recommend this, if they don't need to close fast, I always recommend that you give yourself 30 to 45 days from the day that you sign that purchase agreement to the date that you close. Yeah. Okay, so today is August 14th. Uh, you would close September 14th if you sign a purchase agreement today, right? That's what I did. I, I made it 30 days out. So as soon as I signed that uh, purchase agreement and I got my memorandum of contract signed and yeah. filed with the with the uh, recorder's office so that nobody could come steal my deal from me, I marketed that property as a for sale by owner, rent mm-hmm. to own, rent to own, no credit checks, phone ringing off the hook because it's a beautiful home. Yeah. And what I did was I required, I said it required a down payment. So I got a, yeah, I got a $20,000 down payment 
for mm-hmm. that property and I use that 20 grand to pay the 15,000. There you go. Other people's money, creativity. Okay. I, yeah, I didn't spend any money out of my pocket and like write a check and say, okay, here, this is for your home. Nope, I didn't have to do that out of my pocket. I used my lessee's money to yeah. pay the equity for this house. So they bought this house for me and they're making the mortgage payments for me because the mortgage payment is $810 a month. That's P-I-T-I. That's everything included. Principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. It's 810. I charge 1050 a month yeah. for that monthly lease payment. So yeah. I paid the closing costs on it too, on both sides. So I made a little, a little bit over $3,000, okay, that I put in my pocket. And then every month, like clockwork on the 28th of the month, I get, I make 240 bucks. There you off go. of that, yeah, that they pay me that thousand fifty, and then I go and I pay the eight ten straight to the uh, uh the lender, straight to the lender. I don't go pay the uh the person I bought it from and hope that they pay, make that payment. Nope, Ooh, I pay the lender. Yeah, we never that, do that. That's a huge mistake. Yeah, so never that, do that. Man, that's a huge mistake to to literally pay that homeowner and then think that the homeowner gonna pay that the lender. Yeah, they're not gonna do it. So, so guys. This is the, that's the thing with using other people's money. You just got two beautiful strategies here to use other people's money so that you don't have to see. I always say too that like, you know, people have that dream of financial freedom and um, they, they, they wake up from that dream and they're like, well, you know, I can't do it because you got to have money to make money. Well, it's not, it's not true. We've been lied to. You don't have to have money to make money. Lonzi just told you how he's buying a, a house on a uh, foreclosure on redemption rights. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just told you how I got a house subject to using other people's money with the lease option fee, the non-refundable lease option fee. So it's there for you guys. It's there for you. Yeah, that's most definitely. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful strategies. So um, what other, what other strategies? Oh, and those, for those that are just joining us, I saw somebody else just joined. My name is Gene Boykin with the go-getter family. Uh, out of Sioux City, Iowa. This is Lonzi Rattler out of Flint, Michigan with the Champion Real Estate Institute. And this is Creative Financing Academy. We're talking about subject two and creative financing where we become the bank. So Lonzi, what other strategy um, do you have for other people's money? Uh, OPM. Uh, yeah, another one is, um, is very, is very uh, people, don't, people don't look at because they think that they can't do it, is um, utilizing your credit cards utilize credit cards so what i mean by that is open up a credit card a secure credit card um and you can literally call that credit card company back in the next three to six months Mm -hmm. to increase that limit so now like when you increase that limit now you can pull so let's say for instance that you get approved for a credit card that's three thousand dollars right that's fine Mm -hmm. um i say make I mean, use the credit card, but don't use it. Use like ten or twenty percent. Yeah, keep it under thirty percent for yeah. sure of the balance. Yeah, yeah. the limit. Just pay it off, right? Mm-hmm. And then in three months or six months or whatever, you can call that credit card company back. And what you want to do is you want to speak to the manager. Do not no. speak up the phone because they're not okay. going. Uh-huh. Um, that manager ask the manager, "Hey, I'm hey, I'm looking for a credit increase." Yeah. They gonna ask you why. Well, it's for business purposes. That's all you need to say. Okay. They say okay. Well, let me run some numbers. So they gonna go back and they are gonna say, hey, well, look like that we approved you for probably double the amount. So now you looking at, I mean, like you got approved for three thousand. Now they even probably doubled you to six grand. Six grand. Mm-hmm. Now what you can do is you can pull that money off that credit card. Uh-huh. Your credit card. Now you're using that credit card as a private lender. Mm-hmm. So for instance, that um that a homeowner were looking to walk away with five, six grand, right? Mm-hmm. You got five, six thousand dollars. You just got to just wait right. here in three, four days. Yep. Um, directly to your account. So now you can pull that money out and pay that homeowner six grand to walk away. Yep. Now on your credit card limit. So let's say um, the credit card is maxed out at this point <clears throat> because you pulled the money off. Well, mm-hmm. it's only going to be a $30, a 30 to $40 a month continue to pay to show mm-hmm. them that it's still in good standings. Now, yes. you do want to pay that credit card off, but that's the way that you can actually pull money off yeah. off a credit card to go out and make purchases on real estate. Yeah, 
Yep, and you're using you're using other people's money. So you don't have to go by that saying you gotta have money to make money. Because no. guys, it's just not true. You yeah. just have to be uh you have to be a go getter. You know, you gotta be creative as yeah. well, a creative thinker and just know that you know what, I'm gonna do this and yeah. there is nothing that can stop me from doing this. You know, oh. my objective has no choice but to be achieved. So when you go about it that way, uh, you know, things will happen for you to reach your goal, man. The universe will make those things materialize. Now, another thing that I do uh, um, to use other people's money with private lenders is I create a credibility kit, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a credibility kit, you know, and I went to Staples and got it all put together, made it look nice. So it's got the little uh, black uh, circle binder in there, you know, make it look all nice, proper, the glossy um, paper of properties that I have purchased you know, they have ones that I own in there and then it has the numbers, the breakdown of the numbers in there. You know, what I what I paid for it, um, what I make off of it each month, my passive income, my lease option fees, all of that stuff. This is a credibility kit. So when you're talking to somebody and you want to borrow some money, um, like guys, I have a lunch uh, this this coming week uh, with a guy. And, uh, you know, he said he wants to learn. He's local. He's local. We're where I'm from. He's got a good amount of money. He wants to learn how to do what I do, you know, but I've got something else going on, you know, and, yeah. and so, 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 you know, it's going to take, a, you know, it's going to be a lot and he's going to have to put in a lot of time to become a student and do this. And he's got other things going on. So, yeah. hey, I'm going to slide in through the back door. This yeah. is well, well, this is what I got going on, yeah. you know, because I know you don't have a bunch of time to yeah. sit there and learn how to do this, you know, because it's got it's going to take time and effort to learn this stuff. Okay. Guys. So, yeah, you don't you don't have a bunch of time to learn how to do this. So how about we just do this? Because you want to mm -hmm. make money anyway. So yeah. how about we just do this? And I'm going to I got I've got my booklet. Uh, for what I got going on. So I'm going to show them, man, here's the numbers. You know, here's the return on it. Here's how long it'll take to get that return of, on your investment. So it'll be easier for you to just do this because you won't have to learn how to do all of this. You'll yeah. just be following a process that I already do. I implement a system and I implement a process. So we'll pay you this much off of the money that you put in. So all you got to do, man, is continue to do what you've been doing, making your money that way. And then you've got some money coming in from this way. Yeah, money with you ain't even looking. The money just hit you in the head sometimes. You like, yeah. oh man, that, that hey, I like that kind of slap in the head, though. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. You know what I mean? So these are these are three ways, three viable ways, guys, that um you you can uh you can get have money to get going, to get started. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, use it. Like you can have to use it. And yeah. I mean, like people that's working, people that's working like they can um borrow against their 401k if it's a... Uh, Yep. They got to have um, some documentation of the reason why uh -huh. but they can borrow against that 401k and go out and make purchases. So, yeah. So it's just not for investors. I mean, for those who work in, uh, definitely for those who definitely just getting started, though. Yeah. Have funding, who's looking to get funding. It's so many ways to. So many ways. So many yeah. ways. Yeah. So you guys, you just got to have that spirit in you and, you know, get tired of uh, going to punch a clock on time every day, giving your all to make somebody else's dream come true. It's time to start making your own dreams come true, guys. It is. So, oh, uh, guys, I got to I got to get up out of here because I got I got the kids today, man. My, 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 my wife, my wife's getting ready to go get her lashes done out of town because we're going on vacation next weekend. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So we brought we brought you some value today. Um, showed you how to get this thing going and use other people's money if you don't have your own money to get started. So, you know, consider hitting that like button. Um, consider putting some flames in the comment box mm -hmm. or just um, if, if you want to learn how to do this and you don't know how to get started, just um, in the comments or DM me or Lonzi uh, the word, the word uh, uh, creative financing. And, and we'll have our team get you started. We'll put it together for you. We'll reach out to you, return your, you know, we'll return your message, get a time set up for an appointment to show you how you get started on this and start making some money, you know? So yeah, just DM that word um, and, and share this, share this, follow us. I'm at the Go-Getter family. Lonzi Rattler is at Lonzi Rattler, right? Yep. That's your, okay. All right, Lonzi, did you have any um, closing words you wanted to say for him today? Um, all I can just say is, hey, do not, be afraid to act, to open up your mouth to ask somebody who has some funds, hey, I got this property. This is what I'm about to make. Yep. Don't be afraid. I love it. Yep. You got closed mouth, don't get fed. Closed yep. mouth, don't get fed. So, guys, I got to say this. You know, um, I, I truly believe this, that, that God gives us difficult times as a gift. 
All right. Mm -hmm. And and we don't, you know, sometimes we don't know how long it's going to take to unwrap that gift. You know, it could be a week. It could be two days. It could be two years. But but nonetheless, it is a gift. Right. So think about it like this. Um, gold, gold goes through a fire. It goes in a fire to come out more pure, mm. more refined. Right. To be more valuable. It goes through that fire to be more valuable. Uh, but that fire, I mean, it's hot. You know, yeah. it's hard. It's super hard. It's hot and it's hard to go through. But it comes out more refined, more valuable, more pure. But a base metal. It'll go in that same fire and be destroyed. Yeah. Right. So we have a choice. The way that we look at these difficult situations are a gift and to make us better and to learn this situation and prepare us for the gifts that we're about to receive. So are you a base metal or are you gold? Which one? Which mm, one? That's the question. All right. We're up out of here, y'all. Until next Saturday, let's get to it. All right. All right. Okay.